Welcome back, and thank you for joining for another one of Mike and Billy's Whiskey Reviews. Today, we are going to do an Old Pulteney. My first Old Pulteney I brought to you on this channel. The third Old Pulteney I've tried. It is the Old Pulteney 17-year-old. I'm going to give it a quick pour here. I'm going to get it open it up a little bit while I talk about the whiskey. So Old Pulteney is not an easy distillery to source here locally. Um, we have the 12 locally on a regular basis and my good friend Keith at the Malted Man Cave was kind enough to give me some of the 21 which I also like pretty well. Uh, but this 17 just recently hit the market here and this is my second bottle in about two months and I really tried to get to know the bottle as much as I possibly could. Kind of down to the wire but I wanted to really get into the whiskey to tell you guys what I thought about it. A little bit about the Pulteney Distillery. It is in the Highlands, it is in the mainland of Scotland, but it is, at least at one time, was the most northern distillery in Scotland. I believe there was a distillery that's like six feet, five inches, slightly more north that beat it for that title of northernmost mainland distillery, but it's way up there. Essentially, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Way up in the Highlands. Um, so the old Pulteney has an interesting looking bottle. Um, has this little neck that's kind of trying to replicate a still, which I think is kind of cool. You know, and usually when I've got these, both these bottles, the fill level's been up to about here, but literally you have one drink and it's, it's down here. So it's deceiving how little alcohol can actually fit in the neck of this bottle. It is 46% even, I think. Yes, 46% ABV. I know it is unchill filtered. Don't know if it's uncolored. I tried to do some research. I didn't see anywhere where it said it was not colored, so I'm just gonna assume there is some type of caramel colorant, though in the glass you can see it's a very, very light whiskey. So if there is color, I would imagine it's very, very mild as far as the color. So Old Pulteney, unchill filtered, uh, northernmost distillery. Um, again, I had the 12 before. I didn't want to buy another bottle because I wasn't that impressed with the whiskey. I'm also trying to get a tw my hands on a 21 year old so I can have you know, four or five drams to really um, get a good profile of what it is before I bring it to you guys. But so far, I'm enjoying the 17 and I think I have a good grasp of what this whiskey has to offer for you. All right, so the Old Pulteney, this is um, aged in a combination of both bourbon and ex-sherry casks. It just said ex-sherry casks from Spain, so I would assume Oloroso, um, but again, I didn't have the exact information on that. So all I can tell you is ex-sherry, ex-bourbon, from the town or province of Wick. Let's get into it. All right, so again, show you the color one last time. Give it a quick swirl around the glass, see what the legs are doing for us. Legs are pretty thick and oily. It's 46%, so that's not completely surprising to see. But you don't always get them in ones that are 46% ABV. So it's a nice little, nice little oily dram here. When I first got my first bottle of this, um, I'd stored it in uh, like a pantry I have. And it gets a little cool in there. So at first, the nose was a little bit closed off. Um, you let it sit in the glass for a little while and it really opens up. But since this one's been oxidizing, I've probably had this bottle open three weeks or so. I've been sharing it with a few people just to get their thoughts. Um, it's really, really opened up nicely at this point, and it should because it's almost gone. So, a lot of fresh fruit. Right away, pineapple. Get a nice, fresh pineapple. Like, if you, uh, if you guys have ever seen, like, a, a, uh, the can of dull pineapple, where it's actually, like, the, oh, what do you call them? Actual slivers, round pieces with a hole in them. When you open up that can at first, that strong pineapple smell with like that probably a little bit of sugar that they added to it, I get a lot of that smell initially in this. So pineapple with some like sugar preservative on top of it almost. Banana. Which is usually a sign of a young whiskey, banana. Uh, this is 17 years old, which is, I wouldn't say called an old whiskey, but kind of a, a medium aged whiskey. You know, I would consider... You know, anything under 10 young, I would consider 10, 12, maybe in 15 year old whiskeys, kind of youngish, kind of entry level as far as age. But you know, if you get to 16, 17, 18 year old whiskeys, those are medium aged whiskeys. Where a lot of 
whiskey's kind of hit their stride, in my opinion, is somewhere between, you know, 18, 21, 25 years old. So banana is an odd, or I wouldn't say odd, banana is a unique smell to get in a whiskey that is as old as 17 years old, but it's a nice fresh fruit to complement the pineapple. There's that maritime smell. Some people say salty, some people say briny. I kind of liken it as a salty, salty sort of um, seaweed type smell. And something nutty. Almond probably. Very, very light almond shavings. And then very nice like minty, grassy sort of smell. And the mint and the grass is just underneath the saltiness and the brininess of this one. Really, really nice whiskey. I was really impressed with this. Um, I was going to pick it up here in Columbus for 120 bucks, which seems high compared to what it is online. Um, also saw it at um, the Party Source in Bellevue, Kentucky for 86. So it kind of jumps around wildly for what you can get this for. I probably paid the top end at $120, but you know, I, Seems like a lot for a 17 year old whiskey, but a whiskey that um, didn't disappoint me. So I don't mind spending 120 bucks for a 17 year old whiskey if it's a good whiskey. Think of it like uh, the Balvini Doublewood. You know, around here it's about $140 whiskey, but in my opinion, worth it. Um, just for what you get, the good cask maturation and the good craft of some of these whiskeys, even if they are, you know, younger than 18 years old. I don't mind paying over $100 for them if it's a solid whiskey. And that's what we have here. Yeah, fresh fruit, bananas, pineapples, minty grass and almonds on the nose. Really nice. Let's give it a first sip. It's balanced. Definitely getting that fresh fruit on the palate. <clears throat> it's sweet and it's sour. And something I wasn't picking up on the nose, vanilla on the palate. And I wasn't really picking up vanilla at all on the nose, but on the palate, it's, it's right there for you. And maybe at the end, just a little bit of ginger. Sort of the same ginger that's on the Macallan 18 on the aftertaste after the kind of the sherry flavors go away and you have that nice little ginger come in on the Macallan 18. Very similar here with this old Pulteney 17. And something spicy right at the end, right at the bite on the end. This is a whiskey that I really wish I could sit here and nose for 20 or 30 minutes in front of you, but who wants to watch that? I, um, the first time, first couple times I actually had this whiskey, you know, filled up a little dram of it, sat it down on a little uh, stool I have next to me. I was watching TV, went back to it, you know, 20, 25 minutes, and it really opened up in some other nice fresh fruits in a very similar way to the Balbini 15-year-old single barrel that was the ex-bourbon barrel before they switched over to the sherry. Very similar. It just keeps opening up and you keep picking up more of those tropical fresh fruits. It's a really nice whiskey in the summertime, especially if you don't want something too heavy. Or even springtime, you know, it's, it's a very sit outside type of whiskey, if you will. And one that would be easily palatable for a lot of people, especially if they were new to whiskey. So uh, if you have somebody you want to step them into whiskey, you know, gently, and you don't want to start out with the Glen Fittix, the Glen Levitts, this old Pulteney 17 is a good one to try. All right, now with water, it is opening up on the spiciness side. I'm not really still not picking up the vanilla for some reason on the nose. I'm still getting the banana and the pineapple and maybe banana and vanilla are kind of, I'm saying the same thing. Maybe it's banana on the nose and a little bit of vanilla on the palate. But now I can pick out the spice and it's cinnamon, a very light cinnamon. Not like the cinnamon challenge, not a punch in your face cinnamon. It's just very nice cinnamon. 
Yeah, I was, I was impressed enough with this the first time I had it that I went right out and bought another bottle. I read this was going to be discontinued, and then I read that it wasn't going to be discontinued, so if any of you have a definite, um, share a link with me in the comment section. I would appreciate it. Because if it is discontinued, I'm going to go buy a couple more bottles, st st uh, stash them away for another time. Because it is a nice whiskey I'd like to come back to. Besides the cinnamon on the nose that came up more once I added a little bit of water, I'm also getting more of those grassy notes and minty notes. It's not like a spearmint. It is a, like a mint leaf. You ever grab one out of like straight off a yard or something to smell that mint leaf? It's that strong. Or like a garnishment on a, on a dish at a restaurant. Almost like a peppery mint. Actually, like cinnamon mint. Good one. On well, the palate, it's sweet and sour. And then right after that sweet and sour comes that vanilla again. It's very, it's one of those ones that's very pleasant on the nose and you pick up six or seven different smells on the nose. And on the palate, you get four or five different other things, but they're so different. I'm not going to say it doesn't taste at all like it smells because it does. It's a fruity, fresh fruit, single malt scotch, but with a little bit of brine, but it's just, it's different fruits. It's more alive on the nose where on the palate, it's, it's brimy. And it's a little bit, a um, little bit salty with a little bit of pepper and almost buttery. It's similar to like a Talisker 18 in the butteriness. It's a very subtle thickness of butter or a buttery taste in my opinion, but um, really, really lovely. I mean, if this is something you guys can pick up, I highly recommend it. I'm a fan of this old Pulteney. I got to thank my buddy Keith from the Malted Man Cave for insisting that I go back to this. Um, I had tried the 12 and wasn't a huge fan. Keith brought over the 21. I was a big fan of that. And then he said the 17 is, is close, not that far behind. So when I saw it, I picked it up and I'm glad I did. So thank you, Keith, for sharing the 21 with me. The 17 would have never happened twice if it wasn't for that. Um, as far as whiskey score, this is a good one. Um, I would say this is probably a 91 out of 100. Um, right up there with some of your better whiskeys, especially for a bang for the buck whiskey. This is quite good quality, even for $120, which is probably more than you'll have to pay for it if you can find it in your neck of the woods. So anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm in a 91 out of 100. Once again, I'd like to thank you for joining us for another one of Mike and Billy's Whiskey Reviews. I've been going for a little while, um, about, about six weeks or so. So back and do knock out three or four reviews today and uh, hopefully get you another round um, of recordings before Christmas time comes. So hope everyone's having had a good Thanksgiving. Hope you guys are watching the Bears win the NFC North. Aside from that, I uh, wish you happy drinking, and I'll see you next time. Until then, the comment section. Thanks for joining.